Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we are going to talk about Ulua Loa, but in some places it is also pronounced as Lulu. Um, I would go with Loa Loa and you can choose the one you like. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. Loa Loa. It is a tissue nematode. It is responsible for causing loiasis, which is also called as Loa Loa filariasis or African eye worm. It is a skin and eye disease. As you can see in this picture, the Loa Loa worm is lecture outline i have introduced you guys to the loa loa now we'll talk about its morphology habitat and transmission life cycle pathogenesis and epidemiology clinical findings lab diagnosis treatment and at the end the prevention Before starting the morphology i like to tell you guys that there are certain stages that exist in the life cycle of loa loa first one is the larvae second one is adult and the third one is microfilaria we'll discuss all of them in detail morphology starting with microfilaria it is released by adult loa loa females as you can see in this picture the black arrow is pointing towards the microfilaria the microfilaria of loa loa can be distinguished from other filaria morphologically as they are sheathed and contain body nuclei that extend to the tip of the tail size. The length of microfilaria varies from 250 to 300 micrometers and it is about 6 to 8 micrometers wide. Structure Microfilaria is sheathed and its body nuclei extend up to the tip of the tail. As you can see in this picture, the purple circles are the nuclei and the pink one is the body cavity. And it is covered uh, with a sheet. Sheet stains light or does not stain. The nuclei in the body are coarse and crowded as you can see them. And they also extend to the tip of the tail. The body has irregular curves and can take on a corkscrew appearance. Here you can see the corkscrew and this part of corkscrew resembles the microfilaria of loa loa. Lava. Infective stage. Larvae introduced by the deer fly that is the intermediate host responsible for transmitting the loa loa infection into the human beings. And especially the third stage larvae, we will discuss the stages of larvae a bit later. The diagnostic stage is microfilaria that is produced by the adult worms in the human body. Larva. It has got three stages. First one is called as L1 or the first stage larvae. When the L1 larvae goes under certain developments, it becomes L2 larvae and then eventually the L3 or the third stage larvae. That is actually responsible for causing the infection. Adult worm. Shape. It is cylindrical size as we know for all nematodes that female is larger as compared to the male so the male is 30 to 34 millimeters long while female is 40 to 70 millimeters long and male is about 0.35 to 0.42 millimeters wide while female is 0.5 millimeters wide color the adult worms of loa loa vary in color structure they have a head with no lips, a body, blunt tail, which means they have a tail that is not pointed. They do have a cuticle that is a protective resistant layer that protects the worm from the harsh environmental conditions. They are sexually dimorphic. Nuclei, they are clumped at tail. As you can see in this picture, the adult loa loa worm, this is the head with no lips. This is the body cavity with certain curves and a blunt tail which is not pointed. It has this cuticle on it and nuclei are clumped there. Habitate. Hosts. Human beings are the definitive hosts while the intermediate hosts are deer fly also called as mango fly and the genus chrysops but in some places it is also called as chrysops so you can go with the one you like this is the deer fly or the mango fly transmission transmission occurs by a female deer fly mango fly or chrysops bite life cycle life cycle of loa loa has two stages first one is human cycle second one is the deer fly cycle
Let's start with the human cycle first. Humans are infected by the bite of deer fly, the mango fly, or the genus Crossops, which deposits infective larvae on the skin. The larvae enter the bite wound, wander in the body, and develop into adults. The female release microfilariae that enter the blood, particularly during the day. The microfilariae are taken up by the fly during a blood meal. Here the deer fly cycle starts and then they differentiate into infective larvae which continue the cycle when the fly bites the next person. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of blue law. It starts here when the fly genus Chrysops takes a blood meal from the human body and introduces alpha larvae, the infective larvae, into the human body. That enters a bite wound. Then it, in the human body, uh, develops into adults in the subcutaneous tissue. The adults produce sheathed microfilaria that are found in spinal fluid, urine, sputum, peripheral blood, and in the lungs. When the fly takes the blood meal again, it ingests those microfilaria. These microfilaria then shed their sheets, penetrate flies midgut, and migrate to the thoracic muscles to get converted into first stage larvae, then into second, and eventually the third stage larvae. Then this third stage larvae migrates to the head and the fly's purposes to become ready to be responsible for causing infection in the human beings when the fly will bite the human again and will introduce that into the human body. On the right side are the human stages and on the left side are the fly stages. Pathogenesis. This is the worm or microfilaria you can consider for now. There is no inflammatory response to microfilaria or adults, but a hypersensitivity reaction that causes transient, localized, non arrhythmatous subcutaneous edema, which is also termed as caliber swelling. Caliber swelling is a type of reaction, the allergic reaction to metabolic products of the worms or to the dead worms. The most dramatic finding is an adult worm crawling across the conjunctiva of the eye, a, a harmless but disconcerting event. As you can see this worm in the conjunctiva. A worm migration through subconjunctiva may progress to invasion of the eye, causing pain, intraocular inflammation, and blindness. Clinical findings. As we've discussed in pathogenesis, that edema will occur, that is also called as caliber swelling, which is itchy but painless swelling. Adult worms present in conjunctiva can cause pruritus there uh, and can also cause pain and eventually blindness. Pruritus all over the body, muscle pains, arthralgias, fatigue, visible migrating adult worms under the skin. Epidemiology. The disease is found only in tropical Central and West Africa, the habitat of Vector Chrysops. When this worm will enter the blood, so blood is supplied to the whole body, so it can go to heart, kidneys, brain, and other vital organs of the body. So complications are cardiomyopathy, nephropathy, and fatal encephalitis. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of blood, skin, but sometimes we'll also need samples of sputum, um, spinal fluid. Diagnosis is made by visualization of the microfilaria in a blood smear. There is no useful serologic test that is available for diagnosing the loisis. This is a blood smear and you can see loa loa worm. This is its head, this is body and this one is its blunt tail having nuclei inside it and a cuticle around it. Treatment. Diacylcarbamazine eliminates the microfilaria and may kill the adults. Surgical removal. Worms in the eyes may require surgical excision. Prevention. Control of the fly by insecticides can prevent the disease. 
All right, guys, let's review everything quickly. The organism is Loa Loa. It is also a filarial worm. It is responsible for causing loiasis. The mode of transmission is via the bite of deer fly. Hosts, the definitive hosts are the human beings, while the intermediate ones are the deer flies. Endemic areas are the tropical Africa. Primary location is the subcutaneous tissue. Diagnosis is made by viralization of the microfilaria in blood smear. Treatment is based on giving diacylcarbamazine and surgical excision. Category is the tissue nematode. Insect vector is the deer fly or the manga fly, the genus Chrysops. The stage that infects the human is the larvae, the third stage larvae. A stage in humans most associated with the disease is adult worms in the tissue, skin, and conjunctiva. Important stage outside humans is the deer fly ingests microfilaria and in return introduces the infective larvae in the human body that is responsible for causing the infection. And that's it for today's video. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I rarely upload blogs. Till next time, assalamu alaikum.